Hey everyone, one of my subscribers asked me if I would take a look at a plugin that could be used in both Adobe Photoshop and Affinity Photo 2. Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and as a photo artist trying to push ourselves creatively out of the box. All right, let's jump into our program today. And I got an email from somebody. By the way, if you would like to respond to me by my uh, to my private email address, it is right here at the bottom of the screen. It is stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. And I have to look this up again. This is from Christina. Uh, last name starts with H. Uh, and as I had mentioned before, if you email me something and I use it on, on my uh, YouTube channel, I will not use your name at all unless you give me permission. And if you do give me permission uh, when you contact me, it must be just your first name and last initial. I'm not going to put your full last name in there. The reason is um, too many, <laughs> uh, you know, Weird people out there, in my opinion, you know, might want to hunt somebody down or something like that. So uh, try, just trying to keep this on a level playing field. Anyhow, with that out of the way, let's take a look at a program. And we're going to talk about, she wanted my opinion on a plugin that could be used both for Adobe Photoshop and for Affinity Photo 2. I will show you toward the end of the video on where you would download this. And I'm going to talk about the pros and cons. And I'm just going to highlight some of the features. And I'll give my personal opinion about what I think uh, about this plugin. Well, first of all, let's start out with saying this. As I um, discovered, it is not available, at least as of right now. I'm not sure if it will be in the future, but it's only for Windows uh, users. It is not for a Mac users. So if you're a Mac user, you might want to just skip this video or just out of curiosity, see what this is about. Or like I do have a couple of friends that own Macs, but they actually run Windows uh, on their Mac to run certain applications that they can't get that will run on a Mac platform. So I'm going to leave it up to you. But let's talk about, you know, to me, that's a little bit negative uh, side right there, right off the bat on this pl uh, plugin. Um, I just like things on both platforms. I came from a Mac background. I'm running a Windows background. But um I think it's important that we support both platforms. So that's a minor negative right there. But let's jump in and let's take a look at the program. First of, first of all, um, I've been hearing people call it uh, GMIC or um, Gimmick, but it's a GMI. C. So we're going to take a look at this plugin that's again for Adobe Photoshop and uh, and, and again Affinity Photo 2. So once it's installed, again, I'll show you how you install it on both the programs toward the end here and where you find to get it. But once you install it, it's going to be under your filter drop down menu. So I need an image here in Photoshop. So let me just grab something. And not too bad of a plugin uh, because of this. I'm just going to duplicate this layer right here. Um, the price, it's free. Free is a good price, right? So um, you can't really go wrong with this because you're not paying for anything. And uh, so let me just jump into this. If you go to filter drop down menu and just come down to, I'll just call it uh, GMIC or whatever, and s choose that on the menu. And as this opens up, there is, uh, let's see, 600. Let's take a look at here at the very top. There is 624 filters as of right now built into this plugin. And uh, I'm just going to highlight two or three of them. I'm not going to waste time, but I did find a little gotcha and uh, a little on the negative side on this one, but you know, not the end of the world. The other stuff is pretty cool, in my opinion. But I'm going to go under a category called Arrays and uh, Titles. So I'm going to click on this and expand this. And let's see, the area I want to come into is called Loose Photos. So down here, where it says loose photos watch what happens to photo on the right hand side when i do this so when i click that it does that kind of just automatically that type of design you can go over here 
I would call this the properties area, and you can change the density of things, uh, all these different sliders that you could change, maybe the rotation of this, uh, the maximum. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that you could play with to get the look that you want. Let me pull that back. I think that's just a little bit too much. But here's the got you. As I pull this back a bit, if you could take a look at the center right here, where it is on that car, and if I select OK to apply that, so it's going to have to render out. And uh, by the way, the um, higher the resolution of your image, um, the longer this will take to, to process. But it didn't line up. In other words, the frames scattered when I accepted it. It didn't stay permanent in the spot that I saw it in. And uh, I think that's a, a negative because it's a hit and miss process. But, you know, if it if you get what you like, what the heck. So I'm going to delete that layer and let's duplicate that again. Let's go to filter, come down to, uh, again, GMIC. And let's take a look at a different category. But you got, look at all these different settings here on the left side, all the different filters under that one category. Okay, the other category I'm just going to jump to, there's, there's an artistic one. I'm not going to go into that. There's so many different things you can actually get into uh, that actually will do more than what Photoshop does. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. I'm going to come down to something called frames down here. And um, I'm going to choose a very this one right here called frame blur. And this is what it does. Not bad. Um, you could change the size of the outline by moving the slider here. Let's move it back a bit. You can change the color by clicking on this. And, you know, you pick a color, whatever you want. Um, I don't know, just I'll pick a blue or something. Just, you know, why I would pick blue, I don't know. But just to show you, you can change that. I really don't care for that. I prefer white. So we'll go back to the white right there. And again, you could change the size of that frame. But uh, the blur, if I push this back a bit right here, you can see it's unblurring the background. So you can play with that. And then once you, you know, got it set, then just click on OK in the lower right-hand corner and it drops it right into layers in Photoshop. So pretty cool thing right there. Um, there's something called Polaroid. If I click on that, you get uh, this kind of look. Um, old photograph, click on that. There you go. Pretty cool stuff right there. So that's all in your frames, a whole bunch of stuff. The key thing is no matter what filter you choose, you have the different parameters in the middle here that you can actually adjust based on your liking. Uh, I'll just go under one more category here. Uh, let's see, I think it was this one, and I wrote this down. So, drop water, check this out. <laughs> and you can play with the uh, the density. I mean, how many droplets you want, how big do you want them to be? Um, the radius of this, let's pull this back. So, basically, you just go for it, play this to come up with something that you say really like there, and then select OK, and it'll drop it right into layers. So, the filter I like, I think, for one reason. One, you got 624. Yeah, there's, you know, the one with the frames didn't quite give me what I wanted. Um, it was sort of a hit and miss process, but still, how much did you pay for this, right? Nothing. It's free. Uh, just your time to download it, which I'll show you where to go download it again and how to install it properly uh, in Photoshop and in Affinity Photo. So this is the plugin. It works the same in either program. Uh, my opinion on this, I think it's worth it. I think it's definitely worth it to go get, download, play with it, um, see if you know anything in there interests you that you would use in future projects. But again, the key thing is because it's free, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a great add-in to Photoshop and Affinity Photo. My biggest disappointment is Windows only. So I'm really sorry about that. Of course, they didn't know that because this is referred to me by one of the subscribers. And by the way, um, if you are new to the channel, consider liking the channel, subscribe if you have not subscribed, and hit that notification bell. The next time I upload a video, you'll get notified on that. Okay, so this is just, you know, the interface. There's just so much to look at. Uh, I just want to do a light introduction to it for you. But let me show you um, where you get this to download it. And then how do you install this uh, software uh, um, or this plugin, I should say, in our two different softwares, if you own Affinity Photo 2 and Photoshop. All right. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay. To get uh, GMIC or 
gimmick, some people call it. Um, get your favorite browser and you just want to go to their website. It's, a, a, you know, gmic, we'll just go .eu. So it's G-M-I-C dot E-U. You'll come to their website that looks like this. And you'll see right here, this is the download section. So if you click on download, um, I also forgot to mention that it does run on, on uh, Linux. If you're, so if you're using Linux and uh, if you're using GIMP, which is a free open source software, um, you can install it, I guess, on GIMP. But down here, you'll see Windows right here and just click on whatever one you want to choose. I chose this one. had no problem with that. And you really only need to download this. By the way, if I click on that, uh, you'll see that the, uh, the browser should change. And um, uh, here in my upper right-hand corner, it's asking me to save that. I'll show you um, the two files that are important that you have to carry over to Affinity Photo 2, but you don't have to do this in Photoshop. So this is the website. This is where you go to download it if you're going to use this, again, in Affinity Photo 2. If you're going to use Photoshop, let me show you how you do it in Photoshop, and then I'll show you how you do it in Affinity Photo 2. Okay, we're gonna start off with Photoshop first and how do I install that? And it's really easy, just open up Photoshop. Obviously you have to have internet connection. And what you wanna do is go to plugins right here uh, in Photoshop. And when you do that in the drop down menu, choose manage plugins. This opens up the Creative Cloud desktop uh, app and just go over here in the search bar area and type in GMIC, enter the keyboard, and there we go. It found that, and I've already have it installed. So, but if I click on this right here, you'll see in the interface it says installed in the right corner here. But this is where it would obviously, if you're doing this first time, this is where you're going to actually click on that to install it automatically into Photoshop. And then when you're done with that, again, it's going to show up in the filter drop down menu down here. There's GMIC, and there's your choice right there. Okay, so that's how easy it is to do it in Photoshop. But if we're not in Photoshop, in fact, let me close out of Photoshop for a moment here. And when you download uh, the zip file, this is the file that you would get. You want to unzip that file. No, I said unzip the file, not zip it. Zip it. Unzip the file. You will get this folder right here. And here's the important thing. These two, this folder and this file, you need to highlight both, copy that. So here on the Windows, it's just Control-C to copy that. And then what you want to do is open up Affinity Photo and what you're going to do is you're going to go to the, let's see if I'm trying to remember, I think it's the edit drop down menu and select, let me close out of that. We're going to go to the edit drop down menu and select settings. And once you choose settings, when this dialog box opens up, you want to go to an area called or category called plugins right here. Now, here's the key thing please make sure you activate this checkbox right here because by default, it's not activated. This says allow unknown plugins to be used. Then what you do is that folder and file that I told you to copy, you're gonna go over here to open default folder, click on this, and what you're gonna do when this opens up, you're gonna paste those two files there. Ignore this one, just you're gonna paste those two. And uh, that's all there is to it. What you have to do when you're done um, in, uh, with the install there, you have to close the program out and then reopen it, and you should find it under the uh, filter drop-down menu like you do, say, in Photoshop. So let me go to just open up a different image here. And I'm just going to duplicate that. So we have uh, two layers there. And I'm going to go to filter drop down menu, just come down here to plugins, and this is where you'll find it. And just choose that plugin right there. And that should open up. And it works exactly 100% the same, just like we saw in Adobe Photoshop. You know, pick your, let's go to arrays there. Let's play around with the, uh, the one I played with before, which 
is, uh, see, I got to look it up. What was it? Oh, yeah, loose photos right there. So I'm, I'm just going to accept that. Take a look at where the center one is blocked out right there. Let's see what happens when I click on OK. See what happened there? It's just it's not in the same spot. That's the only negative I could find of the different filters I've looked at. But if it gives you what you want after you put it in there, you know, that's great. So, again, very simple to install in Photoshop. Very easy to install, again, in uh, Affinity Photo 2. By the way, if you could do me a favor, again, if you feel like you're, you, you're learning anything here today, uh, please uh, like the video, subscribe if you have not subscribed, and hit that notification bell. Also, again, my email address should be right here at the bottom of the screen, stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. If you'd like to send me a private email uh, asking a question on something or some issue, uh, go for it right there. And then the very last thing, I'd like to thank, uh, I've had a few people that um, have been buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. Uh, again, the link will be in the show notes. It's also uh, right here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, for the reason that this is not a monetized uh, YouTube channel, it's not sponsor sponsored by anybody. It's not big enough to be sponsored anyhow. And um, uh, my intent is hopefully it will be in the future. But if you're getting some value of this and you'd like to support the channel, please consider going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Steam Photo Artist and donate a cup of coffee or go to the extra tab. You'll see three different things there that I have uh, that I'm offering for sale. There'll be intro videos explaining what those offers are. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, I'll end this the same way I always do. And uh, But before I do that, um, yes, I think uh, what Christina referred me to this, I'd never heard of it before. Maybe you have, I, I don't know. But it's I like it. I mean, why not? It's free, so play around with it and see what you can come up with. So get the camera out. Push yourself to make some mistakes. Why? Because we learn from making those mistakes. Literally, let's think creatively out of the box. Until next time, see ya.